What's going on guys? It's Gene Jensen. It is time for another Friday Night Live. Boy, I barely made it home for this one. I was watching my niece play uh, pitch in a softball game for Abra Abraham Baldwin Agricultural College, ABAC as they call it here in Georgia. And uh, she's their ace pitcher, so it's always fun to go see her pitch. I don't get to do it very often because the, the school's a long ways away. But she had nine strikeouts tonight, so proud of her. Proud of her. She can throw 68, 68 mile an hour fastball. That's hard to hit with a softball. But anyway, good. I'm going to get everybody a chance to get on here real quick. And we're going to make a, a few little announcements, a few little updates on some things, and then uh, lay, let this thing go wide open and, ask, and have you guys ask some questions. So, hello, Chris. How are you, man? Come fish gun the Gunnersville tournament. No, I can't do that. I got to spend some time with my kids tomorrow. Uh, I'm leaving to go out of town for a few weeks after tomorrow, so uh, couldn't do it. So anyway, what's up, Patrick? Kevin, what's up, Kevin the Bait Man? Uh, da, da, da. cool, cool man. We need to get together soon, man. But I'm heading. I'm hitting the road here in just a second. Or just a second, hitting the road next week. But anyway, uh, what's up, Hunter? <laughs> hey, Chris, what's going on, man? Oh, man. Cool, thanks, Ethan. Th Ethan says uh, he's learned so much from me. Okay, how many people got on? 145? Okay. Uh, let me go ahead and make a couple of announcements. Uh, the website's not up yet. thought it was going to be up Monday. We had to make some major changes. Uh, I'm still excited about it. And, uh, but I still don't have stickers available. I got lots of shirts, lots of hats, some really sweet, sweet shirts, um, and more shirts coming in all the time. But, uh, uh, best of all, be a place for me to direct people to go watch my YouTube videos and, and show up on social media. It's just going to be a, a catch all and it's going to be called flutemaster.com. Um, so, uh, the videos are coming out pretty good. I, I filmed two yesterday. Um, I actually flew my drone. I uh, launched it from a kayak yesterday and retrieved it from the kayak, which is something I've always been scared to do, so I'm working on that. I suck at flying a drone. I don't know why, but uh, I sure sure want to um, want to get better at it. So let's see what else is going on. Uh, going to be next week, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I'm going to be in uh, at the... New England Paddle Sports Show in uh, at the University of New Hampshire. Yes, I'm driving up there. Not looking forward to the drive, but uh, probably hang out a few days after that and fish in that area. I got some buddies uh, in that area that I want to go fishing with. Uh, I'll be uh, repping the, the Bonafide kayaks. We're going to be in the Bonafide booth, and uh, I get to go put the Bonafide in a, I guess they've got a demo tank that's at the place. And I'm going to show how stable it is and do some real crazy things on the kayak. So, well, as crazy as I can do in a demo tank. So I'm pretty excited about it. Um, let's see. Ian asks, is there any KBF Arizona trips? Not that I know of. Uh, at least not this year. i got to start making a little bit more money. Uh, hopefully this website, you guys can go. And uh, the cool thing about this website is you'll be able to not only buy my apparel, and stickers and hats and that kind of stuff but you'll also be able to pick up your 13 fishing rods and reels uh, all my sponsors or most of my sponsor stuff will be on there or be available on there uh, like the cigar line I'm gonna have a, a monthly deal of these are my favorite things or these are the things I'm using that's it's still in the works with that one but you should be able to go in and just kind of look at the what are my favorite things for that month uh, pretty cool little lot of, lot of ideas going out there so it's uh, gonna be pretty neat so um, Rod Royal, we are going, I'm, I'm going to contact him this week. Hopefully I'll remember to do it. Go ahead and set up a time. I know he's coming back here in the, um, in the next couple of weeks, I think. And I'm going to try to sneak in and go say hi to him at least. Um, Ryan asked, is the concept Z worth the money? It is to me, dude. I mean, I'd spend 200 bucks on it any, any day. Matter of fact, I think it's worth about 275, $300. Cannot believe they didn't, uh, they didn't charge more than that, but anyway. Um, but yeah, that's what's going on. It's uh, life's going crazy right now. I'm busting out as many videos as I can. 
uh, and I'm working on those beginner videos. I did one yesterday on uh, a really, really detailed one about how to hook a worm and how to, to rig certain things. And then I did a video on the Texas rig and I might redo that one. There's a few things that I forgot in it that I'd like to put in there. So, uh, Michael DeVito, what do you think about the favorite rods and reels? I, I, you know, I've only, I've got very, very, very little experience with those. Um, the ones that I've held, uh, the rods themselves felt a little heavy, but I've, I, the one I held was their jig rod, was their big flipping rod. Um, the only reel that I really used was the spinning rod and, uh, or the spinning reel. And that was back before they fixed their problems. Matter of fact, it was right before a uh, Lake Fork guy got, uh, found out he had a tumor a couple days before that. And, uh, I got to mess around with them. They were really un unbalanced, but I heard that they fixed those. So that's my opinion on them anyway. Um... Chris O'Mara uh, asked, what's a good bait for uh, muddy water? Um, a lipless crankbait, a, a big bladed spinner bait, something that has a lot of vibration, a black and blue jig flipping into, into bushes. When the water gets muddy, the bass moves shallow. I just did a video about that last month. Go back and check it out. But uh, just, you know, flip it, flip to hit to shallow cover. Uh, <laughs> Matt, man, thanks for the 10 bucks gas money for your trip up north. Boy, I'm not looking forward to that. Oh, uh, it's going to be, how many hours today? 18 hours or 20 hours or something like that. And I'm got, my route takes me through the middle of New York City. I think I'm going to bypass that and add about 50 minutes onto my drive. Um, Spencer Joyner, uh, you're awesome, man. Love your channel. I learned to cast a baitcaster when I just started from your videos. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, what would you use in a pond with loads of turtles? I don't know. I've never had that issue. I don't know. Oh, the same thing. I mean, I'm not trying to catch turtles. I'm trying to catch bass. So uh, I don't think the turtles have make much difference with the bass. Now, I that little turtle lure is really good for bed fishing, though. Uh, the doomsday turtle. I have a pack somewhere around here, and I can't find it. I looked for it for, oh, shoot, a couple of hours the other day. Um, let's see. Thoughts on the biospawn spin swim bait? Good, uh, good question, Todd. I don't have any, so um, I try to get them to send me some. Uh, a few weeks ago, nobody ever, and I never got them, so I really don't have an opinion on them. I I used some prototypes that were really good, um, but that's as far as I know. I don't have any in my, in hand. Um, my last day with Biospawn is uh, middle of next month because uh, the same owner as Mystery Tackle Box, Tackle Box owns Biospawn. And so I knew when I left Mystery Tackle Box, I was also going to have to leave Biospawn. So not something I wanted to do, but uh, it is what it is. What is the best bait for a bass on beds in clear water? Uh, Alabama Bloodline Outdoors, thanks for the question. Okay, I'm going to take a little time to answer this since we're right in... Most of you guys are about to be in spawn right now in my area. They're spawning hard. Um, have at least, you know, when I'm on my kayak, I have four rods rigged up. I have a square bill that looks like a bluegill. I have a um, some type of a small flipping bait on a three-aught or four-aught uh, flipping hook. Um, a lizard and a, uh, a small swim bait. Those are the four I'm going to have, uh, have on. Now, I might take the swim bait off, the small swim bait off, and put a second little flipping bait, maybe a different weight or something. So the trick is, is that you, first of all, you try with something with natural colors. One's going to be green. One of those flipping baits is going to be green pumpkin. I'm going to throw it in there multiple times, see if I can get that fish to react. If the fish is making really big circles and taking a long time to get back in the bed, I usually leave and go somewhere else and find one that's a little bit closer. But I'll spend a few minutes, if they're really big, trying to get them to move closer to the bed and start what we call locking on. Once they lock on, uh, they're catchable, dude. And so you keep throwing that bait at them and keep throwing that bait at them and, you know, multiple casts, 30, 40 minutes, maybe an hour, um, and, and hopefully they bite. If you're having a hard time getting them really ticked off, take that lizard. Throw that lizard out there. You're not trying to catch the fish on the lizard. The lizard is used to piss them off. So take them, take it out, drag it through the bed a few times. Don't throw directly at the fish if they're off the bed drag it through that bed and keep dragging it and shaking it and working it very, very, very slow through that bed. Um, thanks, Ozzy. I'll get to your question in just a minute. Then, uh, 
then you take and just piss them off. That's all you gotta do is just make them really, really mad. And um, and once they pick up that lizard, reel it in, put it down, pick up that little small flipping bait with the bigger hook on it, flip it in there, drag it through, and within five casts, you're gonna catch that fish. That's how you do it. I'm gonna make a video about it next week or the, probably the week after when I get back and uh, and we'll go from there. So, all right, Ozzy says, first tournament next Saturday, 600 acre lake. Temp should be mid 60s, water temp uh, about the same in Indiana. What should be your go-to lure for clear and dirt for dirty water? Thanks for teaching us to fish. If it's that temperature, they're going to be either hard pre-spawn right off of the, the the shallow areas, the shallow pockets and shallow, I'm not assuming there's a creek in there, but like the shallow pockets, get up in there and start throwing something to figure out whether they're spawning or not. If, if they're not spawning, they're gonna be cruising around that area. A fluke, a topwater bait, buzz bait in the morning, um, uh, a jig flip to cover, a crankbait, a square bill is excellent. That's what I would be throwing anyway. That's as much as I can tell you without really being on the lake. Um, Let's see, what is the best all-around rod? It all depends on what you fish, or what your favorite lures are. If, I know for me, for instance, I love to fish a weightless fluke. I love to fish a crankbait. I love to fish a spinnerbait, um, a, a shaky head, a light Texas rig. If I had to pick one rod, it would be a medium fast action rod. But if you like to fish Texas rigs, heavier Texas rigs, <coughs> jigs, heavier spinnerbaits, and stuff like that, um, you you just uh, hold on a second. Let me get rid of this moron. Um, you just you go with a medium heavy rod, seven foot three, something like that. So that's what you do. Uh, thoughts on brass bullet weights? I don't use them. I don't like them. They are a different different uh, sound. A lot of people believe in them, but I I would much rather use a tungsten. So um, let's see. Uh, what's your opinion on the Tracker 175? Uh, to be honest with you, with trackers, I'll tell you the one thing that, that keeps me from liking a tractor is trackers are very wobbly compared to the other aluminum boats. The Triton that I had, uh, my Lumacraft, they're very wobbly. You'll find yourself fishing in the center of the boat more than you'll find yourself fishing off, standing off to the side of the boat because it leans so much. And that's just because they're narrow. So... Um, Oh, shoot, David T., I am so sorry. He says, how do I make it stop snowing? Oh, thanks for the two bucks, dude. That sucks. Um, It is April. They It snows in places in April. My niece made a post on a, she lived, I got a niece that lives out west out in Utah, and uh, she made a post that everybody's complaining about it snowing out there, and it has snowed every April in the last 10 years, and she made a post about it. So it this is the last bit of cold snap for you guys up north and out west, I believe. So... Uh, Jeremy, kayak tournament tomorrow on Chick, putting in at Sail Creek. That's a good choice. Uh, give me four or five top lure choices. Going to be um, 62, 74. They're going to be spawning, dude. I'm telling you, go back in the back of Sail Creek. Uh, throw a chatterbait, throw a spinnerbait, throw a, a limpless crankbait until you find them. And then, uh, and then uh, when the sun gets up high, uh, start looking for, looking for beds and, uh, and try to catch them. I prefer to stay off and catch those pre-spawners on points and things like that with a chatterbait and a, and a lipless crankbait. Uh, if you use a lipless crankbait or a, or a square bill, it'll work too. But if you use a lipless crankbait, use something with chartreuse in it, make it a shad color. Some reason on Chickamauga, it they the craw patterns don't work as well as the shad patterns. Uh, mainly, I think because there's not a whole lot of clay bank so on that lake, so there's not a whole lot of places for the craws to live and grow and breed and everything else. So that's what I would be doing. So. Uh, but the rattle trap's been freaking tearing them up the last few weeks. Um, Weston Welch, what's my opinion on ardent reels? They're very clunky. They've always been really clunky to me. Are you, uh, am I going to make some more crappy fishing videos? I, it may take me a little while because I'm on a, good grief, I just realized this light's bright. Hold on a second. Um, I turned that light up to take a picture and I forgot to turn it down. But, um. Crappy, I've got to learn Lake Weiss really good before I do any more crappy fishing, so. 
Um, Santee Cooper, Steven Walden, any pointers? I've only been on there once. My boat broke and I had to get off of it. That's back when I had that old Triton. Uh, what's your thoughts on John boats converted to bass boats? I used to do that and make money on it. So I, I am a full believer in converting a John boat into his bass boat. My first boat was a 14 foot Grumman with an eight horse tiller on it. And I took it and put a deck on it and put a pedestal seat so I wouldn't fall out, give me better balance. And I fished it on Clark's Hill every chance I got. So yeah, I loved that boat. Um, Let's see, what lake would you recommend in Florida? Oh man, this time of year? The St. John's River is where I'd be this time of year. Let's see, uh, are you going to make some more crappy fishing? Oh, I already got to that one. How do you find fish without graphs? I fish from a kayak and have trouble finding them. If I don't have a graph, I learn, I, I figure out where the points are. I Actually, I fish more from a map than I do a graph. Um, get the Navionics web app um, app on your phone and use the maps. Of course, small ponds probably don't have them, but fish points. Fish points, fish points, fish points, and you'll find fish. Somewhere there's going to be fish, fish hanging out on a point, uh, and, and I don't know what depth, but, you know, just play around with it. You'll get it. Oh, man, Iowa Bassin. Who do I like better, Sony Michelle? Or Nick Chubb, uh, Georgia Bulldog fan. Um, dude, I like Nick Chubb. I, as much as I love Sonny Michelle, and, and Nick Chubb just ekes him out a little bit. So, uh, Shamim, thanks, man. Thanks for the 10 bucks. What is your go to leader, fluorocarbon leader, besides Seaguar? I don't know. I have been using Seaguar since 2006. Um, I don't have another one. I really honestly don't. I've, that's the reason why it was so easy for me to, to uh, approach Seaguar about sponsoring my show and sponsoring my YouTube stuff is that I have, uh, since I, I remember the month I bought my very first spool of Seaguar, which was um, August of 2006, because September is when I caught that 9.98 .98 out of the grass using eight pound test fluorocarbon, Seaguar fluorocarbon. So I don't know, man, I got no, no answers for you. Um, uh, when you built decks on your boat, what did you use? Treated? I actually, yes, I used treated, but I did not use 2 by 4s People that use 2 by 4s are overkilling it. You could park a truck on a deck of a boat that's built out of treated 2 by 4s I used 2 by 2s um, And I framed them up and everything else, and they work just fine. Most of the boats that I built and sold are still around. Uh, they're all electric because of the electric lakes in Atlanta, but that's what I use. Uh, saves a lot of weight. Going to the Lake Ozarks in a couple of weeks. Any tips? I've never been there, man. Sorry, Landon. Um, Ethan, best braid for the price. Um, Seaguar Brazex is what I what I use if I if I'm in a budget crunch. I know it's a it's twenty dollars a spool, but um, that's that's what I would get. I I kind of like their red label. I'll use it in a pinch if I need leader material, but I would not use it as 100% fluorocarbon on my reel. Uh, it's just a little stiff for me. Um, let's see. Do you use treated? Uh, uh, do not use treated. It reacts with aluminum. I've never had that problem. Um, I don't know. I've never had that issue. Really, I mean, I know I've I've treated I've used treated in one or in three, and in one I actually treated with uh, deck seal. Yeah, so I'm not sure. I'll have to get a hold of my guys who bought those years ago and see what it what all has happened. Of course, back then they used a different thing to treat your wood with. What is your opinion on mystery tackle box? Is it worth it? Oh gosh, um, it's worth it if you need to collect tackle. Um, it really is. I um, the reason I left mystery tackle box and the reason why I don't do their slams anymore is because I spent a year and a half trying to um, trying to get them to improve their product and it and it just never seemed like it did so that's when I decided it was time for me to, to uh, get out of there so that's the way it is um, let's see haven't been on a fishing live in a while cool Philly 
Uh, flipping baits, no action or a lot of action. This time of the year, a lot of action. The warmer the water, the more action you want. Um, rage bugs, rage craws, um, anything with a lot of flipping and flapping. If it's cool, if it's still in that lower 50 range and below, I'd go with something that has less action. Um, like a, uh, what was I flipping the other day? Um, a Berkeley, um, uh, Chigger Craw has almost zero action with the claws. Um, and, and it worked great. And it's one of those things you can fish it really, really slow. You, it just kind of sits there. It doesn't really do much. Um, favorite color lizard. I like black and green pumpkin are the two colors that I use the most. But when I'm bed fishing, I use banana yellow. Um, Chatterbait in clear water. Yes, G Finn, definitely. Um, Iowa Bassin, I'm screwed wearing a blizzard warning over blizzard warning overnight. Ah, dude, I am sorry. You know what? They are selling houses down here in the south. They really are. And there are jobs too. Come on down. It's nice and warm down here. Uh, I see. Um, have I done any videos on the egg a rig? No, I have not, Paul. Um, I don't know why. I just don't like fishing it. I have a bunch of them. I just don't fish them very much. Have you seen many bass on beds in the Pauling or Polk County area? I imagine they are, but it's, it, it, we're not out of, out of full moon yet. When that full moon hits, those females are going to make a beeline to the bank. You can go and, and bed fish now in the area and find a few of them spawning. The males will be up shallow. So what do you do? You back out to that deeper water. Go back out to five, six, seven feet and drag something around. If it's, if it's a spawning pocket, go to the center of that pocket and work your way along that center of that pocket with a, with a jig and you'll catch big, big females. So, goodness gracious. I should not have eaten Zaxby's tonight. What would you use on Clark's Hill right now? Depends on the water. If the water's up and in the bushes, I'm flipping bushes. I am flipping bushes, I'm flipping bushes. Um, but what I would probably use right now on Clark Hill, um, I don't know. I'm drawing a blank. Depends on whether they're spawning or not. If they're not spawning, I'm using a chatterbait and a lipless crankbait. Red. Red, red, and red. Uh, wish we could uh, still bedfish. Spawn wasn't that great here for some reason. Casey, I'm assuming you're in Florida. Yep, Tampa Bay. For sure, man, it wasn't. It's kind of crazy weather. It kind of went up and down. The bass, you know, that, that happens. That's the reason why all bass don't move up to spawn at the same time because you get crazy weather and there's always a certain percentage of them that the, that the babies will actually survive. Uh, just going to be fewer this year than normal. Um, most underrated bass lure would be the... Um, the trick worm. The zoom trick worm is what I think is the most underrated bass lure. Are you still planning to shoot a video with Tactical Besson? Yes, I am. I'm going to talk to him about it. Like I said uh, earlier, he's actually coming to the east, uh, coming east here shortly, um, and uh, I'm going to try to uh, call him next week and and see if we can't meet up and do something. Um. Let's see, all time favorite pond bait. Uh, those little bitty spinner baits that Strike King makes, uh, the Bitsy Spin or something like that. Those are my favorite. I absolutely love them. Red in spring is the thing. It is on most lakes. Like I said earlier, the Chickamauga, Chickamauga is a little bit different. If there's not a whole lot of clay banks, I find that, that shad work, uh, shad patterns work better. Uh, those clay banks is where those, those, uh, those crawfish can grow and breed and do everything else. And if there's not a whole lot of them, they won't be that good. Um... ever consider buying a fiberglass boat? Nope, I don't. Uh, I love the cost uh, per day of an aluminum boat. My boat costs me between $20 and $30 a day. Um, and you can't beat it. You really can't beat it. I don't care. How, I can finance it for 100 years if I wanted to, you know, and just make it to where the boat itself is affordable. But per day is where you went out. So, uh, Shamim, thanks, man. I appreciate it, man. You're awesome. Uh, 
Did LTB sign me yet? I cannot uh, confirm nor deny that. I'm still under a uh, non-compete clause with uh, with Mystery Tackle Box for uh, about another month. So, uh, ever try the Trash Fish Lures? I have not, but I hear they're really good. Are you a fan of two live wells in the new boat designs? No. No, no, and no. Um, when I, so three years ago, I was in on the LumaCraft um, pro staff meeting with all of the big wigs, and I stood up, raised my hand, and said, I cannot sell a boat in south of the Mason-Dixon line with two live wells. Why? Because it's wasted space. I love, we love storage. And so one live well is plenty. Uh, thanks, Casey, man. You're awesome. Thanks, brother. Oh, man, that 10 bucks will go a long way. I need gas money this week. <laughs> oh, I wonder how far it is to dang New Hampshire. Uh, Fluke Master, what's your bait for muddy water? A black and blue jig or a black and blue flipping bait? Um, and, a, and a square bill crank bait in uh, chartreuse or black back. Tips for slightly flooded creeks. I only have one decent creek near me. Uh, let's see. If the water's coming up, you're going to want to get to the bank. It's more about where the fish are located than how to catch them or what you're going to catch them on. If the water is on the rise, the fish are going to be really, really shallow. If it's on the fall, they're going to pull out to that first drop. That's how they're going to do it. So, um, Hunter, fast moder or moderate action for square bills. If they're a heavy square, square, square bill, like those uh, those big uh, uh, 2.0s, strike, or striking 2.0s, uh, I use a, a fast action. If anything else, I'm going to use a moderate action. Um, if I'm ripping it through heavy cover, cover like grass, I tend to go back up to a moderate or, or fast action just to give me that backbone to be able to rip it up. So, Trout Place, thanks for the buck, man. Uh, <laughs> John Bolton, call Alex Rudd and tell him he needs an SS-127 ASAP. No worries, dude. He's going to borrow my... I've got two of them. He's going to borrow my other one in a few weeks when we fish together in Tennessee. That's all it takes. Put somebody in one and um, and I don't even have to sell it. It sells itself. Higher price point secondhand reel versus lower price point brand new reel. Which should I choose? Woo! Depends on how it was taken care of, because I used to buy used reels all the time, and about one in four were duds. Uh, they got beat up, and I'd have to go have parts replaced and things like that. I'd say buy a new one. Uh, reels these days, even the inexpensive ones that are 120 and and on up, uh, or 100 and on up, are, are really good. So, uh, let's see. Do you think the 13 fishing concept day would be okay for swim baits under two ounces? Yes. Yeah, that would be I, anything over two and a half, maybe over three ounces. I'd go with the concept A3, uh, but uh, two ounce swim bait, no big deal. Um, Jonathan asked, uh, I know you're into kayak, just bought a feel free lure one. Good, good boat because it's 36 inches wide and thought it'd be very stable. I tried standing in it and it doesn't feel very stable at um do I stand up in, do you stand up in your kayak? Yes, I do. I stand up in mine really easy. The, the, uh, the SS in SS-127, which is my kayak, stands for stand up, sit down. Uh, and so it is designed to be able to stand up and fish. I stood up all day yesterday in that thing. So um, I don't know why a 36-inch kayak isn't very stable. That's kind of weird. Oh, goodness. Thanks, guys. Thanks for all the donations. Y'all are awesome. Uh, Alex Galvin, best kayak under $2,000, and is it worth it to spend that much on my first kayak? Yes and no. Everybody's favorite kayak is their second one, uh, because we always make a mistake and buy a first one that's overpriced or, or not overpriced, uh, just isn't comfortable. Get into them first and then decide, but the best one under $2,000 is the, the Bonafide SS-127, and it retails at, I think, $1,600, if I remember correctly. Is it $1,600 or $1,700? Um, Adventures, thanks for the 10 bucks. Uh, what rod length power reel do you recommend for larger swim baits? Depends on the weight. That's when it gets really, really tricky. Um, I like for, um, for like the bull shads, the six inch bull shads and stuff. I can fish that on a, uh, on a heavy action jig rod, seven foot, um, heavy fast action rod. Um, anything heavier than the six inch bull shad, I'm throwing it on a dedicated swim bait rod that is like a broom handle. 
Uh, it's hard for me to tell you. It, it just all depends. And I'm not an expert at swim baits. Uh, what's the best way? Tony Richards, thanks for the 20 bucks, man. You're awesome. What's the best way to use uh, use a top water frog? I'm assuming you mean, um, holy crap, Shamim, you gave me 100 bucks, dude? Thanks. Holy cow. You're awesome. Uh, what is the best way to use a top water frog? Depends on what time top water frog it is. Um, go watch. Um, do I have? Yeah, go watch my old top water frog video. I love to walk a frog in the grass and heavy cover and things like that. But if you have sparse cover, use one of those little paddle frogs, the uh, the zoom horny toad type frogs. Um, that's the best I can tell you. That's awesome. Um, Neely's fishing adventure. Standing up takes getting used to. You'll get over the the wobbling feeling. Yes, you're actually you're absolutely right. Um, I never recommend learning how to stand when the water's cold. Uh, <laughs> Because, yeah, you can fall out, and most kayaks these days, most fishing kayaks these days, you fall out before you turtle. Another thing to practice before you put anything in your kayak is learn how to get back into it while you're in open water. We call it open water reentry. Uh, learn how to do that without turtling or flipping over your kayak, because that's when you flip your kayak. It's not when you fall out. It's when you try to climb your old fat butt back up in there. Think, I'm one of them. But anyway, so that's what happens. Michael, uh, thanks for the 10 bucks, dude. You're awesome. Um, Andrew, when would you throw a fluke? I throw a fluke all year long. Uh, it's a speed and action that I worry about depending on water temperature. The warmer it is, the more action I give it. The colder it is, the less action I give it. Um, Phantom Fishing. Hey guys, go check out his channel when we get off of here. Phantom Fishing. I always mean to give him props. He's a, he's a buddy of mine. Great dude. Uh, got a really good channel. Um, let's see. Landon, thanks, man. Thanks, man. That's, that's, that's a cool thought. Uh, some kind of fold-out side booms for kayaks more stable. They need to come out with some kind of fold-out side booms. There was a kayak company that tried to do that, and it ended up being not a piece of crap kayak, but I watched a guy almost sink one once because it just didn't hold a lot of weight. Um, it was kind of weird. Uh, Trout Palace, thanks for the two bucks. Wish I could understand Korean. Uh, do you ever go fishing and get skunked, or do you think that there's some way to catch a fish on any lake on any given day? There's always a way to catch a fish on any given day, but I do get skunked a lot, a lot more than I show. Um, I probably ought to show those more so I, so you guys don't think I'm the greatest fisherman in the world because I'm not. Um, but definitely, um, uh, the best thing to do is just keep your head in the game. So, but, uh, and, and if it gets really tough, just like grab your spinning rod and light line and Ned rig and go to town. Any boat, uh, any boat, cold, any boat, cold water, life jacket means life jacket. You'll only have a couple of minutes to get out. Yes. Uh, Rod, good, good point. Um, the biggest thing with your kayak or with any boat, especially kayak, always wear your life jacket. Always. Don't even, we almost lost a dude in, in at the at Kentucky Lake, this, at the KBF National Championship. Um, he had his life jacket on and that's what saved him because he got hypothermia and he could no longer swim. And so he spent, he basically, they tied him off to his buddy's boat and his buddy paddled him to the bank. Uh, and it was the, uh, the NRS Chinook kayak or a, um, a life jacket that he had on that kept him out of water, kept his head out of the water and everything else. And he actually survived because of it. So important, dude. Um, let's see. I saw one from Steven. Uh, it's called a freedom hawk. Oh, okay. Somebody must ask the question. Thanks guys. Jackson Reed, $5. Uh, thanks man. Fluke. I'm going to be fishing in cold waters in Northern Michigan. Can you, uh, how can I target the deep smallies dude? Um, I don't have a whole lot of experience doing that, but I caught some really big ones last year in cold water, 35 feet deep on Lake Erie, and we were finding those little humps that are out off of shore. You know, smallmouth are offshore fish most of, most of the year. Those little two and three foot humps that are out in the middle of the lake, and we were dragging tubes and drifting with them, and we whacked them, dude. We caught a ton of big ones. Uh, that's where I caught my personal best, almost a seven pound smallmouth. Um, Let's 
Let's see. I'm from northern Michigan. Uh, that's cool. That's uh, what else? Okay, so now I got 250 people on there. If you guys haven't subscribed, be sure to subscribe to my channel. But uh, one announcement, real quick. I'm going to be at the new uh, the New England Paddle Sports Show at the University of New New Hampshire next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, doing tank demos for uh, Bonafide Kayaks. Kind of hanging out, doing what I do at shows. I really enjoy them. So, uh, you guys, if you live up in the Northwest, uh, come uh, come say hi. Um, what part of Michigan? Oh, you guys are having your own conversations. <laughs> uh, let's see. Do I prefer clear or stained water for a fluke? I I really prefer clear. I have a lot more a uh, lot more experience, and uh, we're a lot more success in clear water with a fluke, just because it doesn't have a whole lot of vibration. Slightly stained is okay too. Thoughts on McCoy Mean Green Copolymer? I've never used McCoy's. I didn't even know they made line. So Tennessee Bass and TV, what's up, man? Uh, thoughts on the Lawrence Hook 2 Depth Finder? I've only seen it on paperwork. I've only only really looked at um, at the specs on them. They really seem like they, uh, they're they attempting to make it easier for you guys to use a fish finder. There's a lot less stuff going on. Boy, I can't wait to get my boat back um, so I can start doing fish finder videos. And I can teach you guys how, to, how I read them. I can't teach you how the experts read them because they're a lot better than I am. But at least I can get you started. Um, how long was the guy in the water at the national championship before he got hypothermia? Um, it was about, it started to set in probably in about 20 minutes, probably less than that. He was in the water for an hour. He was at that point where he was about to call his wife and say goodbye. That's how close it was. Um, and boy, you talking about a miracle. They got him to the bank. They took him up, a, up some stairs to a house. Just so happened that that house was being rented by some of the competitors for the KBF national championship. And one of them decided to stay home, so the door was open. They went in, got him warmed up, took him to the hospital. The ambulance came and picked him up and took him to the hospital. Um, and he was he was okay. But, man, I'd have been shook up like a freaking oh, box of rocks, man. Oh, Lee. Uh, what's the best bass boat for the buck? Um, an aluminum. Uh, I love my PA, my, uh, my Alumacraft Pro 185. Absolutely love it. Um I think the retail, the base retail is somewhere in the mid twenties, uh, and then when you start putting all the really expensive crap on there, like I've got on there, uh, the price goes up. But I think you could probably get my boat for thirty, uh, thirty four, thirty three, thirty four, if I had to guess. So with the motor and with the electronics and with my power poles and everything else that I have on there, because yes, I have a completely rigged out boat. It's it's awesome. Um, Where's the upcoming boat home boat show in New Hampshire? It's at the University of New Hampshire um, in their field house, as they call it, is where it'll be. And I don't think it costs anything. I think it's free. Um, I couldn't find anything on the website that said, said it, you needed to buy a ticket or anything. Gene, have you seen the new Z-Man popping frogs? Yes, I have. Um, a good mix between a horny toad and the other popping frogs. Yes, uh, and they float like crazy. You know, I've got the little pop shads. If you want to... You wanna, Feel like you're an expert at skipping stuff under a dock, tie on a pop shag, because that son of a gun will skip as far under a dock as you can get it. Uh, it's amazing. I always make me, makes me feel like I'm a real professional. Uh, hey, Gene, I just want to thank you for teaching those of us uh, who have no one else to teach them. Dude, Ty, thanks, man. That's why I do it, brother. That's why I do it. Um, there are a lot of people out there who there's nobody to teach them but my crazy videos. Um, how does Bonafide handle crosswinds? Uh, pretty good. Not as good as my Mayfly because the Mayfly really set low into the water. But it does fairly well. Um, you find yourself uh, paddling a lot on the same side, but you do that with any boat with a crosswind. But I really haven't had any issues with it. Um, and I've been out on it a lot. Uh, let's see. Kyle Gellner, Concept Z or Corrado K? I have not tried the Corrado K yet, but the Concept Z is what I recommend. It is an absolute amazing, amazing reel, and I need to get a K in my hand because I get that, that question a lot. How do you? How do I get better at skipping under hangovers and docks? Practice. When the fishing is bad, I practice. Uh, seriously, if I'm in if I'm in the heat of the summertime and I'm not catching anything and I'm, my confidence is is shot and everything else, I go to docks and I start skipping docks. And I practice skipping. 
Uh, same thing. If I'm if if I'm on the bank, same thing. I'm going to practice making casts when the fishing sucks. Make the best of it in practice. Uh, Brett Davis, thanks for the two bucks, man. Uh, when do you use a Texas rig versus a jig? Um, man, that's tough. I, I I use them interchangeably. I don't. I find myself not using jigs whole a whole lot in the summertime, and I tend to use all Texas rigs. Other times during the year, I'll just fl I'll have both of them tied up. Um, John Bolton, I'm horrible at skipping, dude. Another thing you can do is just tie on a, tie something on a spinning rod and do it. So, let's see, uh, trout palace. I'm not really good at uh, crappy fishing. I'm not an expert. I don't do it very much. I. Uh, I don't know. I just don't do it that much. I need to do more of it around here. Now, I just, since I moved to this new place, I just don't, haven't had a chance to go out and really figure them out. Matter of fact, all my crappy rods are up in the top of the barn in storage. Uh, da -da. Tips on breaking down new lakes. That's a good video. Um, I usually pick an area using the map and usually an area that has two or three, well, at least one major creek. And then I go hit points and and pockets and points and pockets until I figure them out. And I use crankbaits a lot just because that's what I have confidence in. Um, uh, that's a good question, Ethan. Uh, Gene, my line on my reel is loose, but this just started after about 15 days of fishing. I don't uh, understand why it's become loose. Any suggestions? It, it, that always depends on what you're fishing with. Like if you're dragging baits and you're reeling in that slack line and you're dragging baits and you're reeling in that slack line, that's going to cause your line to get loose. If you if it's braid and you didn't put any backing on it, like uh, like um, electrical tape on the spool before you uh, put the braid on or or put some backing uh, monofilament, it's going to come loose. But the biggest, what you usually is, is the, the lure itself or the way you're fishing that lure. If you're reeling in slack line, it's going to get loose. About every... 30 minutes to it probably every 30 minutes when i'm doing that i'll make a cast out to the middle of the lake hold the line and reel it onto that reel to tighten it up so that's typically what it's what it does um kyle thanks for all you do gene finished fifth in my first bass tournament man i wish i'd have finished fifth in my first oh goodness uh and would have have been close without wouldn't have been close without your videos that's awesome man I finished dead last in my first bass tournament on Lake Alatuna. They call it the Dead Sea. Um, R. Tillman. Okay, I'll get to yours. You need to take that Florida Gator thing off of your little picture. Uh, I don't want to answer your question. I'm just kidding. Uh, thoughts on throwing a drop shot on a bait caster versus a spinning reel? I always, unless I am power shotting, which is flipping a short drop shot into heavy cover, I'm always fishing it on a spinning reel just because a spinning reel you get it fights better. You're usually fishing a drop shot on light line and it just deals with light line a whole lot better. So um let's see. The Kodiak Way says more videos on fishing or teaching with kids. I am working on that as we speak. I've had the outline and everything of a video about how to teach kids how to fish, and I never have felt I, I got it in my head the way I want it. And it needs a perfection a professional video production in order to get it the way I want it to go. But when I when I do it and it's gonna be in the next couple of months, it's gonna be absolutely awesome. So any new prospects for you from Steven? Nah, not that I know of. Um let's see. Uh, let's see. Nelly's fishing. I got skunked on my first bass tournament. I did too, man. Um, R. Tillman. Uh, yeah, dude. SEC rocks. Up here in the Northeast, we go from 35 degree weather to 80 degree weather. What should I expect the fish to be doing and what in the world to use? Boy, that's tough. Um, I seriously, I'd use something that I can fish several different ways, several different speeds, like a jerk bait. Uh, of course, with the water temperature, the the air temperature um, and the water temperature are two totally different things. The water temperature tends to heat up and slow down slower. So I'd use a jerk bait up there, and I'd use um, something like a chatter bait or a square bill. Still the same thing. You just change your speed and your action. 
Um, Ethan B, good question. Should I turn my brakes down when I flip and pitch? I tried that today and the lure didn't go very far. I typically, um, because I go from dock to dock in my boat or kayak, I want to be able to make casts between those docks. And so I don't typically loosen it too much, maybe just a hair from when I normally have it. Um, but it has all to do with the velocity of your wrist, of you know how fast you're going to move your wrist up. Go back and watch that video again. Um, I don't normally loosen it up unless I'm doing nothing but pitching. What is your favorite punch bait? I picked up some uh, Rage Tails today. Uh, my favorite punch baits are a Rage, uh, a, um, what do they call it? a Rage Bug uh, and a, um, a Cutter Worm, a Rage Cutter Worm are the two things that I uh, punch the most. Um... <laughs> SEC rocks, but the Big Ten is the best. Oh, Logan. Poor Logan. Poor, poor Logan. Oh, man. I think there were two SEC teams in the championship this year. I'm about to switch up Braid, Anthony asks. I'm about to switch up Braid and try something new. Uh, what is your favorite brand Braid and why? Uh, using Braid to floral leader. Okay, if you're using braid to a floral leader, I would not use the same braid that I use because I have to be very, very careful on my FG knots. I use Seaguar uh, uh, Smackdown, which is a smooth braid. And with that smooth braid, you've got to make a lot more wraps with an FG knot. I do recommend using an FG knot. Learn it. Take the days, weeks, months, years that it takes to learn that thing. It is the most important knot that I have when I'm tying a braid to fluorocarbon leader. Use some regular floor, or regular braid. Um, the the cigar um uh, what they call the cans and braid is really really good uh and i would go with that or i would i don't you know power pro is great but i used to buy it in bulk and it, it always seemed like there was a, a spot somewhere in that bulk spool that would break instantly as i'm reeling it off of the bulk spool so i stopped using power pro um but there's other good braids out there i'm sure i just use cigar because uh that's my sponsor and they help me with the cost of them. Um, everybody's going going football crazy. Man, I can't wait till the football season starts again. Um, Ryan Gibbs, you ever use a hydrowave? Do they really work? I had one on my Triton uh, the whole entire time. They do work when um, when shad are present, when bait fish are present. The new ones I haven't tried yet, and I'm going to get one for this boat eventually. Uh, but what I found it is is better to have them on than not have them on, if that makes sense. Kind of like with a jig, it's better to have a rattle than not to have a rattle. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't help. Uh, what would you recommend for the first bait caster? If you like fishing crankbaits, chatterbaits, and small jigs, a seven three to one gear ratio uh, depends on your budget. Um, the Origin A is uh, seventy nine dollars. The Origin C is a hundred dollars, and then the the uh, what I would get really I'd spend one hundred and twenty dollars on the uh, on the Inception. That's an outstanding jig reel. Uh, Hydrowave on your kayak. You know, Ryan, I haven't thought about that yet. I might have to try that. That would that would make sense, man. Kayaks are so stealthy. I bet you, I bet you, a hydro wave would work really good on a kayak because they're not. You're not trying to cover up the sound of your trolling motor. Um, what do or would you let fans to go fishing with you, Matthew? Good question. I haven't thought about that. I'm going to be doing some videos uh, where I just kind of I set it up with a parent or a fiance or a girlfriend or a wife or whatever, and go and knock on somebody's door one Saturday morning and yank them out of their bed or whatever. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. And go fishing. Uh, it's something I'm going to do. There's going to be a few of those this year. Um, uh, I might just have to do it. I'm, I don't know. We'll see. I just, I'm just i always so focused on making videos for teaching people how to fish. I just don't think about taking people fishing for some reason. Matt, um, love your videos. Uh, which lures would I use in, the, in Florida lakes right now, this time of year, in warm water? I'd be using a Cinco, and I'd be using a small swim bait is what I'd, I'd use down there. Um, 
see. Amanda Young asked, what is my favorite dirty water bait? If I had to pick a favorite one, it would be a black and blue jig, uh, is what I, or a black and blue flipping bait, something like a, a rage bug or a craw or something like that. But any, anyway, it's going to be, the color's going to be black and blue. Chris M., have you tried 13 fishing rods? Yes, I've been sponsored by 13 fishing for two and a half years. Um, I've designed a rod for them, and uh, I love them, absolutely. I think that they are the best value on the market. They're not the best rod on the market, period. I'm going to tell you straight up, the best rod on the market, it's expensive, but is the Dobbins uh, Champion Extreme by far. Uh, I love that rod. I just don't, I'm not sponsored by them, so I don't own one. But uh, 13 Fishing, if you want the best deal, the best rod for your money, it's going to be the uh, the the black, the um, fake chrome, the fake black, and the muse black are the three rods that I use. Uh, Ryan lives two minutes from Lake Jackson. Dude, I grew up over there. I grew up in Covington. How do you finish your FG knot? Uh, my half hitches don't always hold. Okay, when when you finish making all your wraps, tie one half inch half hitch with the line tight. Then let everything loose and pull your lines and get that knot tight. And then make one more half hitch, a double half hitch where you wrap it twice before you pull it tight. Then cut your fluorocarbon and do that again. One half hitch, two half hitches, and a double half hitch. And that's it. Um, flute working on anything? There's just a bait fish imitation. Uh, I don't understand that one. Let's see. Um, have you ever fished Brushy Branch in uh, Coosa? I have. Um, my last Texas rig video, I was at Brushy Branch. I didn't. I think I got one bite. I wasn't there for very long. I was actually on my way to Alabama, or the other side of Alabama, and I had to haul butt. So I didn't get a whole lot of chance, but uh, Brushy Branch seems like it's a pretty good place to fish. Um, there's just a lot of tournaments that go out of there. Oh, man, I'm tired. All right, we're going to do this for eight more minutes. Um, Neely's Fishing says, I bought a Fate Black spinning rod with a Creed GT 7.1 medium light, 7.1 or 7 foot 1 medium light. Uh, man, I love it. Yeah, that, that Creed GT is incredible. Um, I, I used to only like to fish the 2000 size, the smaller size, because they're, the 3000s were always heavy to me, but then they came out with that really light Creed GT and I freaking, I get it. I use all 3000s now. Um, have I ever fallen out of my boat, Harry? No, I have not. I haven't fallen out of my kayak and I haven't fallen out of my boat. I will probably fall out of one this weekend or next weekend at a, at the uh, New Hampshire or the New England paddle sports show because I'm going to be doing tank tests and walking around on a, on a bona fide. And I don't have very good balance. Let's see. Um, let's see what happened to your new website. It's still, I, I made that announcement at the beginning of this. Um, the website will probably be up this next week. I haven't heard from my website guy in the last two days. We, I went over it before we launched it on Monday. There were some things that we had to change on it. Um, and, uh, my website guy's not, he's a fisherman, but he's not a really good, really, you know, he, he doesn't fish a lot. So I have to go back behind him and check some stuff, but it's going to be awesome. It's going to have my apparel on it. It's going to have hats. It's going to have some cool stuff. Uh, I'm going to be selling odds and ends. I'll be selling my, uh, 13 fishing some 13 fishing rods and reels and cigar line. And uh, we're working, the one thing we're working on is the Bass Mafia boxes. Those are one of the things I'm going to have on there. So, uh, what's the number one thing you can recommend for a new angler? Hmm, there's a whole bunch of things. Go, away. man, I don't think there's one thing, really. Uh, don't spend too much money. <laughs> Just buy some basic stuff. Go watch the videos that I've launched just recently on beginning fishing. Uh, and I'm still doing them. I filmed one yesterday. On which setup do you prefer straight floral versus braid? Um, mainly on my, my crankbait rods, I use straight floral. And on my spinning reels, I use braid to a fluorocarbon leader. Um, and everything else, I kind of go back and forth between the two. I like to have one jig rod that's full core pull as it's 100 fluorocarbon and then another jig rod or flipping rod that's braided and i'll and i'll decide whether i want to put a leader on it or not 
So, uh, Tim Roach says, tell him to watch your videos. Yeah, watch my videos, bro. That's <laughs> probably a good thing. Uh, let's see. Chris Kremen, good advice. Says, keep it simple, stupid. Kiss. Yeah, that's kind of how I believe. You're going to get started. Just kind of keep it simple. Your uh, Flute Master picture behind you is very crooked on purpose. I don't like things straight on the wall. Of course, my uh, my little uh, play button right there is uh, is straight. So, do I fish like uh, Lake Weiss? Uh, Fred Stewart asks. Only when I am forced to. So Ryan Gibbs went to Heritage High School. That's awesome, dude. I went to. I spent a semester at, at uh, Rockdale County High School, and then I went to. Uh, a, 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 Got a full time job and put myself through private school my junior and senior year. Used to play uh, soccer against uh, a bunch of the guys from Heritage. So, um, let's see. Thoughts on favorite rods? Heard bad things. I don't, like I said, I told, said earlier, I've held some favorite rods in my hand. They felt heavy, um, but the rod that I held was a jig rod, so it's not designed to be perfectly balanced. Um, I've held a spinning rod in their hand back uh, several, several months ago, and uh, it was the spinning, not rod, the reel, spinning reel, and it was very unbalanced, but I think I remember hearing that they were fixing that. I don't know if they did or not, but um, other than that, I don't know. I don't pay much attention to those rods. I don't really have any concern for them. I, they literally been out for a long time, and the first time I tried them was, um, or the picked one up was just a few, you know, a couple of months ago, so. Um, what do I think of bombers? The only bombers that I use religiously are the flat A's. Um, I absolutely love them this time of year. Um, my John Bolton, my personal opinion is that the 2019 KBF National Championship will be in Alabama, but not on Gunnersville. Thoughts? I have no thought because I know where it is. Um, what are your thoughts on Abu Garcia baitcasters just picking up a Pro Max baitcaster? Um, you know, if I was to pick up any of the entry level style or entry level price uh, baitcasters from them, the Pro Max is what I would get. I really would much rather see you get a an Origin A or Origin C, but that's just because I promote them. And they're good reels, um, but the the pro I fished a pro for a long time uh, several years ago, and they were really they were good re good reels. I just wouldn't do what I did and try to fish a nice heavy swim bait on there because I got really bad at backlashes and lost my swim bait. How does the bona fide perform on the river? Um, you're gonna have to give me a few weeks to figure that out myself. But I do know the guys that are on the pro staff that fish rivers religiously love it. And so they are the type of guys that they can get, they are really picky about what they have on the river. And so uh, I'm excited about seeing how it would do. I get to try out the, uh, the new uh, uh, SS-107, which is their new 10-foot, 7-inch um, boat this next week. I'm looking forward to it because they say it is sick how stable it is. So if it holds up a fat boy like me, I'll be happy. Uh, Stephen Walden, do you see those aluminum boats that look like bass boats at the Classic? Yes, I did. I can't remember what they were called, but man, I was impressed. The owner, <laughs> I met the owner when I was at the booth. I was, uh, all he could see out from underneath the boat were my feet because I had crawled under the boat to look at the hull. Um, and that when he, that's when he knew I was serious about checking out the boat. So we had a good conversation. Uh, but they're nice. They're really good. I, I'd love to see one out on the water. He says they'll go 60 miles an hour with a 150 on the back. Um, I'd like to see that. So what do you think about lose reels? They're pretty good. Um, uh, those people who know, who like them, Tyler's real, fi uh, real fishing has them. He's sponsored by them. He likes them. And, uh, they're, you know, the ones I've had been pretty good. I did break a spinning reel and a bait caster, but I, a lot of the things I break and I break a lot of things. It's from my own stupidity and my own, the things that I do, you know, that's what happens when you fish 200 days a year. Ah, Steven, yeah, it was called the Vortex. Yeah, those were, man, those were sick boats. What are your thoughts on the $120 die with Tatula Reel? I've ne uh, I had a Tatula um, a couple years ago, and I gave it to uh, Tackle Junkie 81. I didn't like it. It was too big, too clunky. Um, I just didn't like the feel in my hand. It was a good reel. It cast a mile, but just was too clunky. Um Uh, 
Let's see. When you were fishing every day, okay, I'm going to try to figure out what you just typed. When you were 15 years old, what did you want to do for a living? Oh, man. Um, I don't know. I didn't really have a plan. When I was 15 years old, I was trying to get my Eagle Scout. Um, I uh, was worried about school, and I realized that I uh, a lot of things that, I don't know. I don't know. I just didn't, didn't think about it. It wasn't that important. Um... Do you fish for anything other than bass? I fish for crappie. I fish for bass. I fish for bluegill. I fish for trout. <sighs> Stripe bass on the rivers is one thing I'm going to try this year. I can't wait to do that video for you guys because from what I understand, it is absolutely awesome fishing. But uh, other than that, I just fish for whatever I can. But ba bass is my main focus. Bass is what I want to teach people how to fish. So that's... Uh, that's what I've chosen. Now, I will make a trout video because my little brother and I are going to make a tribute to my father who was a lifelong trout fisherman, used to guide out west in, uh, on the Snake River back in the day. And, uh, and since his passing this last December, we have decided that we were going to go and make a tribute video to him and go up to the lake, the, the creeks up in North Georgia that we, uh, that we grew up fishing. And so I've got a really cool picture of my dad, um, of him is the last day him and I ever fished together and I had a feeling that that's was that was what it was going to be and so I took a, a, a digital camera with me before cell phones had cameras and took lots of pictures and so I've got a really cool one of my dad I need to find there's another one I'm missing that I want to find so fishing every day are you a Christian yes I am uh, can you come to Washington I'm hoping you mean Washington State because I'm gonna be up there my brother lives in Seattle I've got lots of brothers and sisters so my brother lives in Seattle, and I want to go up and visit him. And I've got an old army buddy um, that I really want to see. I haven't seen him since before we got since. Oh man, middle of the way through the army, but him and I were best friends, and so I really want to go see him. Have you ever thought about making a video on deep ledge fishing out of a kayak? Um, good idea, dude. I think I'm gonna do that this summer. I mean, shoot, Chickamauga's right up the road, and Gunnersville's right over there, so they're both ledge lakes. Um, what is my PB bass and crappie? Personal best bass is nine pounds, twelve or nine pounds, twelve ounces. Personal best bass is ten pounds, twelve ounces. <clears throat> my personal best crappie is seventeen and three quarter inches. I still have not broken the eighteen inch mark. I've caught five over seventeen, over seventeen inches, but I have not caught an eighteen inch crappie, and I don't want one so bad. So. Uh, speaking of Eagle Scout, do you keep up with John, the kid you fished with after he got his Eagle Scout? I have not, man. That's a good idea. I think I might, I want to see if I can get a hold of his dad. So, um, Stephen Walden, spoon video. Funny thing, dude. I have zero confidence in a spoon. None in those big freaking monster spoons. So I'm going to have a Rudd, Alex Rudd uh, from Alex Rudd's Fishing. I'm going to have him teach me how to fish a spoon. Um, I may even get old, the guy that invented the dang things to, to teach me. I know he didn't invent them, but, you know, the guy that, what's his name, Nichols. He says, I don't know squat about those suckers. I tried to fish them for two, three days this last year, and I sucked. Uh, I would love to see a video series on how to read a topo map and pointing out the differences in structure and cover. That's a good idea, dude. I have an old video on how to read a topo map. Go back and watch it. It's really, really good. Um, but, uh... But yeah, you got it. Um, I, I'll do another one this year because it needs to be redone. Chad Hoover is pretty good with spoons. Chad Hoover is good with little bitty spoons. Chad is not very good with really, really big spoons. I don't care what he says. Love him to death, but... Mm. Um, any tips for pressured waters? That's a good... That, that actually, it's... Boy, I'm way over time, aren't I? Okay, that'll be my last question. Any tips for pressured waters? And I'm going to go ahead and jump into this. Light line... Go fluorocarbon line if you can afford it. Small baits like a Ned Rig is probably the best pressured water deal. And fish really, really, really slow. A Cinco fished really slow. Or you can go just the opposite and fish a crankbait, a square bill, or a lipless crankbait very, very, very fast as the water starts to warm up. Just do something different than what everybody else is doing. And you'll be able to catch more fish. So... All right, guys, I'm going to jump off of here. I'm losing my voice. I need to go and, uh, and get ready to go fishing tomorrow. I'm taking my son uh, kayak fishing tomorrow. So it's uh, thanks for joining me. Thanks for hanging out with me for an hour. I uh, really appreciate it. You guys are awesome who donated, uh, donated to my trip. Um, 
This is the most I've ever raced in a live video outside of that, uh, that fundraiser I did for Special Ops Survivor. But uh, check out my Fishy Shirt of the Month Club. Check out uh, the new shirts that are coming out. And when I, as soon as I have that website up, I'm going to let you guys know 